Okay, this is a question that we get, you know, a couple times a month, but it's one that people really, really uh, need guidance on. Um, if I, if I want to sell and buy a house, which is the best order in which to do that? Okay, traditionally, uh, seven out of 10 people need to sell before they buy so they can get their equity, they can get their money out of the one they're selling to put into the one they're buying. Or they can get free of that mortgage so they can qualify for the next mortgage. Now, banks and, and, and buyers and sellers typically can navigate that almost simultaneously, meaning I can tell the, the seller of the house I'm buying, I can buy your house as soon as I sell my old house and it's already under contract. So on this date, my old mortgage goes away and I will immediately qualify for this mortgage. And so it's kind of a domino effect. Now, a couple of quick stories on that, though. Brandon on our team this week alone helped two different buyers navigate that domino here, domino yep. there, and they moved perfectly seamlessly. He was able to negotiate a lease back option for them so they could sell, get free of that mortgage, and buy and not have to be homeless in between while they waited for you know one mortgage to go away and one to start or to get their money out of one house and put it into the other. He was able to navigate where it was just boom, step one, step two, step three, move from one house straight into the other, never have to sleep in a hotel, never have to move your belongings and furniture twice. And in both situations, it was like timed perfectly to the half day where they were able to move out, move in, keep making payments, nothing really changed. And it was beautiful. Well, I was going to say, like, they actually got longer to move out. It, like, it didn't, it gave them peace of mind because it, they didn't have to rush. Right. Like, they, they didn't have to try and have everything planned for three hours. Right. To close on two properties and get everything moved. Like, yeah. they, they had so much uh, freedom from the fact that they had an extended lease back to be yep. able to do that on a time that made sense for them. Yeah, and, and, and if you're not familiar with what a lease back is, you sell your house and stay in it, and now you're no longer the owner, but you're a renter. And what that allows you to do is approach your buying side without panic, right? And there are times where it's really difficult to pull that off because that seller is not willing to do that or whatever the case may be. Um, we had one client this year where we negotiated for them to have a one month lease back. Unpaid, right? Yeah. Free. Yeah. So the, the long story short here is you can move in this crazy fast paced market without panicking. Panic leads to poor decision making, which is going to impact you, your family and your finances for a long, long time. So if the Tatramani home selling team can help you navigate that smoothly without that panic, we sure would love to do that for you. Give us a call 214-310-0008 or text us at 214-310-0008 or you can always find us online at the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team at overunderagent.com. If you haven't shopped your insurance in the last six months or so, call DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance, 214-838-5684, 214-838-5684, or you can find every single one of our recommended pros, our preferred vendors, uh, the contractors and tradespeople that we have out to our houses all the time. You can find them all at treradio.com. You'll find Reinhardt Service Company on there. They were in our office this week doing some work on our air conditioning. Uh, these are the people that we use, and you can find them all at treradio.com. Make sure you check your insurance with DP Lambert. I'm going to call DP this week. It's coming up on a year since DP saved us $1,900. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to yeah, seeing what DP is going to save me this year. <laughs> I, I have a follow-up question for that one that you just asked mm -hmm. about the order of selling and buying. Yep. Does that change for people who are moving out of state? I know we have a lot of people who talk to us. A lot of people are looking at moving to Texas, whether you agree with that or not. Right. There's a lot of controversy, but does that, does that change if you're moving from out of state? The short answer is no, but that's not a one size fits all. I said 70 ish, 70 to 80% of the people need to sell first because they need to get their money out. Right. But by all means, in this market, if you can afford to, and it doesn't mean you just have tons of money laying around, but maybe you can qualify for two mortgages. You don't feel comfortable with them for more than a month or two, but if you could, it is easier to buy without having to have that contingency, meaning I can buy right after my current house sells. If you don't have to have that if or when, then you're, you're, you're much more likely to get an offer accepted as a buyer, right? So if I say, hey, Ian, here's an offer for your house, I can buy on this date no matter what, 
that's way more attractive than I say, hey, Ian, here's my offer for your house. It's good as long as Mason buys my house on Thursday, then I'll buy yours on Friday. Well, now Ian's like, okay, now I got to worry about you and this Mason guy and whether he can get his financing and whether blah, 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 blah. So the answer is, if you can do it without that, which 20 to 30% of people can, and in this market, I'd say another 20% or so are getting really creative. Maybe they're borrowing some money from a family, from a family member, uh, or they're they're going ahead and qualifying for two mortgages, even though that's not really their preferred situation, because it allows them to buy a home in a really competitive market to buy a home in. So I would say out of state is only different in the sense that Texas is a relatively more affordable state than a lot of the states people are moving from. So let's take California, for example, just so we can really poke the bruise for all the people that are frustrated about that. <laughs> um, California, let's say you're selling a four bedroom house and you're moving to Texas for a four bedroom house. That house in California might be $1.3, $1.4 million. And in Texas, it's 300 or 400,000. It's a million dollar difference. So a lot of those folks are able to either pay cash or qualify for that mortgage here and then wipe that other mortgage off two or three months later and still come out really affordably.